Hello and welcome. I recently talked about directional pressure plates and I said I wanted to make another video on using the new repeater mechanics for directional pressure plates, but I kind of wanted to wait for 1.4 to do so. However, um, because it's the same exact file that's going to be released as 1.4, I figured I might as well do it anyway right now to get the video out sooner to you guys. So without f further ado, let's get started, shall we? This first example is essentially the same thing as my previous video's example. We start from one side, and we move to the next, and the lamp on that side lights up. If we go the other way, the opposite is true. However, also we can detect if we press both at once. And this is really great for if you want to have a piano type puzzle in your adventure or PvP map, and you want the player to press plates to activate certain notes, and you want to detect when they press both notes at the same time. To explain what's going on here mechanically, we have a pressure plate on one side that is going to be our one that we are activating first, and then the same is obviously true on the other side. And it's going to send a signal down, which is going to be immediately locked thereafter. You have a two tick delay here that's going to end up locking it, whereas this is a single tick. If you only had one that's locking it, it would have to be slightly higher delay than the one here since we have two uh, repeaters that are eventually going to get to locking this. And on the other side, the same thing is true, but the idea is that we want both of them to be locked regardless of which one we first press. So if we press this one, it's going to come over here through this and lock both of these. So for example, if we stepped on this, it would lock this side into the on position and this side into the off position. And then even if we were to step on this and step off this plate, it's still going to be locked on on the right and off on the left. And the same is true the other way. We could step on this and then go over here and then this will remain off because it's been locked from the beginning and the only way we can prevent or the only way we can cause any mishaps is if we step off of it altogether so that it resets. And then we'll uh, also be able to use a sort of AND gate over here connected over here to another lamp that will only activate of course if we press both at once. Fairly simple stuff there. This next example utilizes two individual packages which each detect a single direction. This bit over here detects going that way, and this over here detects going that way. This gives you the chance to one, see how to build a single direction uh, detector in case you only need one direction being detected, and it also gives the chance to explain uh, how to fix a certain security uh, issue that has been brought up. So the issue is that if we go to an all-in-one package and, for example, stepping on one side led to town and changed your difficulty to peaceful, it would be a problem if the player immediately turned around and left back into the wilderness while still being in peaceful difficulty without going across the whole thing, letting it reset, and then going the other way first. So what we have here is if we step on one side, it doesn't activate. If we step on the next, it does activate. And then even if we go to one side and then immediately decide we're going to turn around and leave now that we've activated it, we have nowhere to go, assuming you've properly set up a corridor around it or, you know, you, there's no other way to go anyway. Uh, all we'll be doing is resetting our difficulty to hard mode or whatever other mechanism you have to reset. So uh, that fixes the security issue there. Now onto the mechanical bits. What we essentially want is on the side that's actually going to be active, for example this side, we only need to send the power down. And since it's going through this repeater, everything is well and all fine and stuff. All is well. And then if we go across, everything's fine, nothing really matters about any of this except for that the power is going from our in the first plate that's being active into our mechanism. Now on the other side it's slightly more complex because what we have to do is we go on one side, and that will immediately lock our off position there. Now that would be great if that's all we really needed, but we'll see if we take this out, that if we step on this one, it's still fine, it's still off, but as soon as we step off here, this gets unlocked. So what we need to do is we have to go over here, lock that, and then we actually have to step on this to lock the locker. So the thing which is locking this is now being locked. That way, if we go across, it will remain off regardless. So just slightly more complex, but still, uh, at least it's very compact. 
And uh, one more thing that I forgot to mention previously in the last example was that this bit here, this little square of uh, stone bricks and the redstone and these two repeaters can be moved down one level so that you can place your, uh, your corridor around here. I just like to have all the innards, all the intestines and such hanging out so that you can easily see them in my examples. And now we can move on to a bigger example. And that brings us back to where the video began. Here is my four-way intersection where each individual lamp on the top here is activated by the pressure plate that is directly below it in this cross-section corridor. The glass here is just so that we can see the uh, bits underneath. And rather than explaining it in that mess over there with all its excessive blocks, I chose to create a small cross-section here which only demonstrates one of the uh, four directions. So just like in our last example, as far as activating our mechanism is concerned, all we really need to worry about is that we siphon power from our pressure plate and directly into our mechanism, which in this case, as is always the case, we are just shanking the power right into a redstone lamp. Now as long as this is on a one tick delay, we can use a two tick delay or two one tick delays, etc. on another repeater to lock it afterward. So all we've done is we've taken all the power down below, right underneath our pressure plates, every one of them, and combined them and sent them off into each one of these individual activation repeaters. So as long as this is on a two tick delay and this is on a one tick, this will activate first and then this will immediately lock it. And on all the other cases, if they weren't activated first, they will be locked before they're activated. So if we were to go on this side here, it will activate and then immediately lock in the on position until we step off. And then if we were to go on to any of the other places here, we would step on it and it would lock it in place before it gets a chance to activate because we didn't step on this pressure plate first. That way, no matter what, it's a fairly simple, uh, simple case of uh, locking all our activations. So to demonstrate real quick, although it probably doesn't need demonstrated, I can go here across and the other direction, Ooh, wait for it to reset, and the other way, and the other way. And the same security things apply, you can make this a bit more complex to give added security in case you don't want players going the opposite direction, but for some simple things, for example resetting puzzles when players enter or leave a room, it's perfectly acceptable. And um, you can actually make this a five-way direction by simply detecting when people fall on the middle platform, or the middle pressure plate, while all the others are not active. Fairly simple there. So uh, I have added my mechanical builds to a Minecraft tech show. So I'm thinking about adding maybe some other uh, stuff, maybe a Let's Play. Uh, tell me in the comments what you would think about a Minecraft Let's Play, whether it be single player or co-op or whatever. And also I may be doing other videos like, you know, I've made a Terraria video in the past and I have my, uh, my own game development videos, so in case you are interested in those, you can subscribe directly to the Minecraft Tech Show rather than myself, and then you'll only be given um, subscription notifications for the Minecraft Tech videos. So I will see you next time.